but um, I want to, uh, let's read a few verses in uh, Matthew chapter 24. And um, this really comes from questions my grandsons um, had for me last week because I had two other grandsons come in from uh, Canada and uh, they were asking me questions about um, the future. And uh, they said to me something a little bit strange. They said, Grandpa, how come I, ha I haven't heard about that? Well, they're 11 and 13, those two grandsons, and um, just really haven't uh, had much, I guess, of an opportunity to study uh, eschatology to really, and, you know, I guess in Sunday school or whatever, uh, so far, at least in their lives, they really haven't heard too much about this. So uh, we had a beautiful Bible study uh, almost a weekend, last weekend, and I was sharing with them um, the future. And what a privilege it is, isn't it, Christian? To know the future. And uh, let's read a few verses here. And actually, when you look at Matthew chapter 24, you really get the longest answer in the Bible to a question. Okay, look at uh, verse 3, Matthew 24. And he sat on the Mount of Olives. And the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered. And for the next, well, <laughs> he, he, you wonder if we could even end it at uh, chapter 25. He goes on to talk about uh, the future. And he says this. He says, uh, See that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places, and all these are but the beginning of birth pain. Then they will uh, deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death, and you will be hated by all the nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another, and many false prophets will arise and lead many astray, and because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all nations, and then uh, the end will come. Now, we could continue on reading, and actually we'll look at verses farther on in chapter 24, but I just want to uh, let you know that I sort of have uh, everything that I preach uh, from my uh, notes will have a D to it, Okay. So we're going to look at uh, five Ds that you will see in this chapter, okay? At least I started with, uh, I like the, um, the letters, and um, to, it, it helps me to remember. So the, we'll, we'll look at um, uh, declaration, deception, devastation, debauchery, declaration, and delusion. Okay, so let me start by saying what um, I started with with my grandchildren last weekend, and we did a we we took out our Bibles and studied Matthew chapter twenty four, and I I showed them many other uh, places in Scripture, but I tried to make it easy. And uh, for them to understand and, um, you know, interesting. And let me say this, okay, just generally, because I, I have the privilege of traveling quite a bit. Um, 
you know, in the last couple of years, more Zoom than I like. <laughs> I'm a people person, okay? I like putting my arms around people. And, uh, but I, I've had the privilege, okay, over the years, uh, not just in the assemblies, but I don't know if it was more because of my profession or whatever. I've been invited to many, many, many churches. And even today, um, get a chance to, to go around North America and preach in different churches and I, you know, other than the assemblies. And let, let, let me tell you something that I've observed. When it comes to eschatology, the study of the, of, of the future, most, not all, but most evangelical churches do very little in this area. And we have a generation today that is rising up and they really know very little about um, dispensationalism, okay? Because what's happening, and again, it's just through my experience and maybe uh, you this hasn't been your experience, but generally we're getting, you know, in the mega churches and the most seminaries and most, not all, most Bible colleges are teaching, um, you know, they're teaching, they're not teaching dispensation. They're not teaching the, um, in my opinion, not rightly dividing the word of God. Now, they're very solid uh, Christian people. So I, I don't want to, um, uh, disp you know, uh, use language that's not true of them. I'm just saying that, um, you know, brother and sister in the Lord, and I know your statement of faith, and I know that you guys uh, understand these things. And, you know, you, you miss out, I believe, when you don't understand god's plan for the future and um you know it's there's just way too much in my opinion reformed theology today and uh like i said most mega churches and and you know uh most churches around you i believe would would be in that uh covenant you know sort of theology where you know, Israel is sort of removed, and, you know, it's, it's um, you know, God's kingdom is already, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, is already amongst us. And, you know, to me, it's not rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, let me, uh, let me say that um, I think the most important verse in Matthew chapter 24 is this, okay? Go to verse uh, 35. I just want to show you this, okay? And I think this is the key verse in this passage. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. Now, why is that put right here? I think this is really important. And, you know, I memorized that verse. I like easy verses to memorize. I memorized that probably close to 40 years ago. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. I love that. But in the context of Matthew chapter 24, I think it's very significant. I, I, I bring you to Daniel chapter 9. Okay, so maybe just keep your hand in Matthew 24, go to Daniel chapter 9, and uh, you will, uh, you, let me just read something to you uh, that I think will uh, tie this in for you, okay? In Daniel chapter 9, it says this, okay? In the first year, verse 1, of Darius, the son of Asherus, by descent of Mede, who was the king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, 
perceived in the in the books the number of years that according to the word of the lord jeremiah the prophet must pass before the end of desolations of jerusalem name, namely 70 years why do i bring this up because daniel was reading the bible the word of god jeremiah the prophet he was reading it and while he was reading it in real time he realized that jeremiah the prophet had talked about 70 years of captivity and captivity daniel you know simple mathematics said hey it's over and guys this is important because matthew chapter 24 will be read will lead i believe thousands if not millions of people to christ after you and i are gone we're not going to be here matthew 24 is not for us okay it's not for us we can in 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 a sense that it's not about us it's about the nation of Israel. You have to read that properly. And so Matthew 24 and 35 tells us that heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. Folks, how are people going to get saved in the tribulation? The word of God. The word of God. The same way you got saved, the same way I got saved. Okay? Now, declaration. That's the first D. Verse 35. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. In real time, down the road, people will take the Bible and realize they're living in the tribulation and jesus makes it clear okay now what does jesus first talk about deception the second d deception verse four okay what does he say in in um in um matthew 24 what does he say he talks about deception what he says this see that one see that no one leads you astray okay verse 11 what does he say again and many false prophets will arise notice the word prophets this is a jewish thing many false prophets will arise and lead many astray and 23 he he warns again verse 23 what does he say then if anyone says to you look here is the christ there he is do not believe it for false christ and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray if possible even the elect even the elect deception it's 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 everything that happens in the tribulation is going to be on like steroids okay because we're really warned remember jude the whole book of jude jude says you know i wanted to talk about our common faith and sort of i just wanted to write sort of a devotional that's what jude says just a devotional about Christ. But he said, look, what's happening already in the churches? This is early in church history. What did Jude talk about? Deception. Deception. 
He says, there's so many false teachers out there. So many. And um, they're leading people astray. And I'm telling you, my friend, it's, it's, it's not only coming to a theater near you, it's already here. You and I should be so grateful for our teaching, for our uh, theology, that uh, we're surrounded by in the assembly here, we're, we, we ought to be very, very thankful for that. Because like I was saying to you early, earlier, there's a lot of false teaching. And I'm going to tell you this. The biggest thing that's happening is uh, we've gone from theology to meology. It's the biggest deception right now. Now, Christ is talking about false Christ and, 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 and uh, that it will be so prevalent that the message uh, will be, will be um, skewed. But we live in a very deceptive time too, don't we? You know, this uh, health, wealth, and happiness. You know, I, I, I'm in the healthcare field. I, I want you to be healthy, okay? I do. And, um, you know, it says in, I think it's in Third John, uh, that it, it talks about, you know, John's writing and says, you know, I, I wish you good health and uh, like I wish you uh, good spiritual health. So there's nothing wrong with, with wanting to be healthy, of course. But my word, today, it's, it's meology, lovers of selves, lovers of pleasure, lovers of treasure, certainly more than lovers of God. And uh, Timothy, Paul writes to Timothy and warns him that in the last days, that this kind of teaching, as a matter of fact, what people will do and I'm not talking about the tribulation. I'm talking about the time that you and I live in. We live in a day where people will want to be surrounded by these teachers who, what? Tickle their ears. No repentance. No, you know, very little talk about sin. Very little talk about hell. It's meology, not theology. So there's a lot of deception already, but Jesus says, when the church is gone, okay? When the church is gone, and look, in all due respect, and I mean this, okay? In all due respect, I have wonderful brothers and sisters in the Lord that don't believe in, um, the, you know, the rapture. Or they believe in mid-tribulation or post-tribulation. And I love them. I love them. But they're wrong. <laughs> I was doing a... <laughs> I was doing another Zoom on, on, on Friday, but it, it had to do with me doing a, a health conference on zoom and then i took question and answers um i used to have a radio show so i i, I had live audience so uh with question and, and questions you know and i and the thing is that we didn't even screen the questions but this lady asked me she said dr martin i i'm i'm a, a vegetarian what do you think about that i said well I love you, but you're wrong. <laughs> Why are you a vegetarian? <laughs> okay. And from my nutritional background, is that nah, that's not right. And, and, and guys, it's the same thing when you look at the scriptures. You know, the Bible is very clear. We're out of here. Uh, you know, 
we're out of here. So, um, you know, I think it's important to, to understand that, you know, look at, look at uh, you know, you've been there before, obviously, but go to uh, Second Thessalonians or First Thessalonians, and I think it, it's good to to go through this and read it. You know, we we know this, but you know, it's good to read in First Thessalonians chapter four. Uh, we don't want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, because they had questions to Paul that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so. Through Jesus Christ, I'm reading First Thessalonians chapter four, and now in verse fifteen, uh, excuse me, in verse fourteen, through Jesus, God will bring with Him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord that we who uh, we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who are fallen asleep. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven. With a, with a shout in this uh, passage, it says, with the cry of, of command, with the voice of the archangel, with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and who are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So will we always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another uh, even more so as you see the day approaching, even uh, encourage one another with these words. And then in first Thessalonians chapter five, we're, we're given, uh, we're given a very, very important teaching here. Okay. And in, in, um, we're told that we're not destined, right? It, we're not destined for Wrath. First Thessalonians chapter one. First Thessalonians chapter five. Our destiny is not the wrath of God. My friend, the tribulation is the wrath of God. On the world. And it's 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 a refining fire for the nation of Israel. You have to you have to get that right. Otherwise, you read Matthew chapter 24, and, you know, you, it, 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 it can be confusing. Uh, there's some good precepts in there that are for us, and, you know, it's good to, uh, you know, to read the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. But, the, but it, there's, there's the, the rapture. The church is gone. You and I are the bride of Christ. We're, we're, we're Jesus' bride. He's not going to give his bride uh, wrath. The wrath of God for us took place at the cross of Calvary. The cross of Calvary is for you and for me, and the wrath of God was what? laid on his son not on his bride and you and i by grace belong to a period in history in god's timing of the church it will be raptured it will be taken away we're out of here and we're not going to go through the tribulation we're not even going to go through half of the tribulation. And, and it, it, it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, verse 1, you have no need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord, that's not the rapture, the rapture is in chapter 4. Now he's talking about the day of the Lord. And uh, the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. The thief in the night's not coming for his bride. And while people are saying um, peace and safety, because this is really important. Uh, Jesus mentions this, okay? That um, 
don't be deceived. Because for the people reading their Bible, when the church is gone and the tribulation has begun, remember Revelation chapter 6. It's a man of peace riding what? A white horse. Promising peace and safety. Look what it says in First uh, Thessalonians chapter 5. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. And for people reading, even in, in the future, reading First Thessalonians chapter 5. But you are not in dark, darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are children of light. See, people are going to get saved. People are going to get saved, I believe, by the millions after the church is gone. Um, deception. Let, let, let me just, you know, make it practical for us. Think about in the last couple of years. You and I have actually lived through a very, very, to me, exciting times. You know, it wasn't fun being locked down. It wasn't fun, um, you know, not even going, you know, you guys in Florida probably weren't near as close as long as, as we were back in, in Canada. It was, it was you know, uh, really a year. Of, or more it was actually more than a year where we we couldn't meet other than on on zoom we couldn't go to our church and when they did open it up they only allowed 10 people in so was it was it difficult times was it different times crazy i never thought in my lifetime i would see anything like it but wasn't it interesting that you and i got to live in something that was not only a pandemic, but it was worldwide and it affected everybody. And there was economic chaos and uh, social, you know, I, 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 I think I might have mentioned this to you uh, in the past. Like the biggest uh, thing that we don't talk about very much is the mental health of people. It, it, it was destructive to, to people's mental health, big time. So uh, all I'm saying is that uh, we, you know, we sort of experience a little, I'm gonna say, uh, you know, almost like a dress rehearsal to the early part of the tribulation, okay? Um, so then comes devastation. Now, okay, I just wanna show you what I drew there. And I, I, did, I did this for my grandchildren, uh, my two grandsons over here. I just drew a line and I, I mean, you guys can't read it, it's upside down, but, or is it? Yeah, it's upside down. But, um, I, I drew a line on, on um, and I, I put seven years, okay? I said, see this line? It's seven years long. And right in the middle, three and a half years, I said, you need to divide those two. Jesus did in, in Matthew chapter 24. And um, what, what I was showing them was when it comes to disasters, another D, I said in the first half of the tribulation, it'll be natural disasters, wars, uh, rumors of wars, wars, famines, Genesis, uh, excuse me, Revelation chapter six, and earthquakes, but there'll be natural disasters. And then at, at the second half, I said, you're gonna see supernatural disasters, the sea, uh, turned to blood, water turned to blood, uh, uh, stars falling out of the sky, uh, the sun darkened, the moon uh, not giving its light. All these things, can you imagine? Turn the moon off and uh, what that will do to the oceans. It's crazy. 
But that's in the second half of the of the tribulation. In the first half, it'll be natural. We've seen a lot of disasters. Uh, I mean, what are they up to now? Twenty five thousand people dead in 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 uh, in uh, Syria and uh, Turkey. It's not like we we haven't seen natural disasters, but Jesus said it's going to get worse. And he said that um, those are only the he he calls them birth pains. They're only birth pains. It's going to get worse. And um, so you know, I think it's. Uh, it's important to 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 get that. So uh, then devastation and then debauchery. Well, Jesus, um, you know, that's uh, mentioned in uh, verse 12. Because of love of sin, many hearts will wax cold. Uh, debauchery is coming. Well, I, if I was a disciple, uh, you know, sitting at the feet of Jesus, um, I would say, and living in the time that we live and say, Jesus, can it get any worse than the times that you and that we live in right now in, in 2023 in North America? Can it be worse? Yeah, it's going to be worse. It's going to be worse. And, um, you and I live in a cesspool. Uh, you and I live in um, like the days of Noah, when it when when it actually tells us in our Bibles that that it was so disgusting. Can you imagine how disgusting it was in the days of Noah, because? The Bible tells us that God was sorry that he even made man. And we live in crazy cesspool, don't you? Don't you and I agree with that? Folks that are even close to my age, uh, I've seen in my lifetime, brothers and sisters in the Lord, what a decline. I, I mean, you know, but Romans chapter one tells us that, uh, you know, mankind, they, they invent ways of sinning. I guess it'll even get worse. And that's what Jesus says. It'll even get worse. And you can imagine without the church, without the church influencing the culture, we're going to be gonzo. And uh, we're not going to be here. And to some extent, I guess, you know, maybe a lot less than we used to be. We don't have much of, you know, it seems like it's frustrating that we have very little influence on the culture. You know, and I, I shake my head. From the government to the schools, um, you know, like my kids, uh, my grandchildren, I mean, not my children. You know, I got saved in 1982. And my kids, they were all in, in, in uh, public school. And they had such a, a wonderful influence. And we just, our chapel, it was just many, 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 many people got saved at the same time. And it was, I was 30 years old. And, you know, there was couples, young couples, and with lots of kids. and. My kids were young. I had four kids, and they, my oldest was under 10. And, and, and you know, they grew up together. Then they went to school together, these kids, uh, from a Christian home. That don't make them a Christian, by the way. They have to come to know Christ on their own, of course. But, you know, my kid, and I thank God, my kids got saved when they were young, and they went to high school, and they, were, they had such a good influence. And I, I remember uh, having 80 young people, 80 in my home uh, for a Bi for a Bible study. 80 young people in high school. And uh, my kids, I couldn't go to the high school. 
My kids went to the high school, brought them in. But today, is it is it even possible? I know in Canada, you certainly can't bring your Bible to school. And, you know, a lot of people are homeschooling today. That was unheard of, really, in Canada, at least, in the 1980s. I, mean, I, ne I You know, I'm sure a few people did it, but I never really heard about it. Our kids went to public school. We live in a different age. And then let me just give you the other Ds because I don't want to. Uh, devastation is coming. Debauchery is coming. Declaration, uh, verse 14. It talks about the abomination of desolation. Look what, look what uh, it's written there. It, it says here, uh, it really gets you to stop and, and look at, at that verse. It, it, it says this uh, about reader. <laughs> I'm putting my little spin on it. Reader, hello, be aware. Linda, listen. Look what it says. Pay attention. Reader, pay attention. When the desecration, the abomination of desolation, and I was teaching that D to my grandchildren last weekend. I said at the three and a half mark, the Antichrist, who was known as a man of peace, who was bringing the world together, who was promising this and promising that. And, um, you know, he, he signs a peace treaty with Israel and the nation. And they, they get deceived and they believe him. They think that he's bringing peace to them. And then the mask comes off. And halfway through the tribulation and the Antichrist, the man of Satan, the man of perdition, who hates God's people, hates the Jew, hates them. The mask comes off. And you have the, the, uh, the, um, before that was declaration. I didn't go into that. The gospel will be preached throughout the whole world. And I could have spent some time there, but we're over time already. And I just wanted to say that in the declaration, do you know the gospel will go out? That's why people are going to get saved. Read Revelation chapter 7, 144,000 Jewish evangelists. And then Revelation chapter 11, you get two prophets come back to the earth. I believe it's Elijah and Moses and unbelievable millions of people will pick up the Bible and read the Bible and get saved. It's going to cost them though. It's going to, most of them will lose their lives. And that's, and that's why it, it, it's a different dispensation because in Matthew chapter 24, it talks about enduring till the end. You see, for us in the church, he who has begun a good work in you, what? Will come lead it. <laughs> God put his hand on you. You're saved. You're secure. God will hold you in his hand. John chapter 10. And they shall never perish. But to those in the tribulation, they're going to they're gonna pay a huge price for their confession of Jesus Christ. It'll cost them, and probably most of them, it'll cost them their lives. And, and then my last D is delusion. I'll leave it with this. Let me close with this. Delusion is coming. During the tribulation, you'll read about it. In the false Christ, the false prophets, Jesus talked about it. And uh, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, because man won't listen to the truth, Satan blinds the minds, even in this day and age, you and I. What is Satan doing? 
blinding the minds of unbelievers so that they may not receive the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. But in the tribulation, Satan will be at work in deception and they will believe the lie. But God gets involved, just like Romans 1. Oh, you don't believe what I've already shown you? You don't believe the truth? Then God says, okay, now I'm going to send you a delusion. That's the fifth D, delusion. Now you won't even be able to see it. Now you're going to believe all the lies. I am going to cloud your thinking. You're not even going to be able to see it again. So my, my friend, let me close with this. It's, this is practical for you and I. Very practical. Because you and I, the Bible tells us to be watching and waiting and witnessing. Watching for the coming of the Lord. Watching for him. Watching for the soon return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Waiting. He who has his hope in himself purifies himself even as he is pure. Purification. Living lives. It says in Titus. Uh, in, in Titus in chapter 2. Looking for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who redeemed us from all iniquity and purchased for himself a peculiar people zealous for good works. That is our responsibility, my friend. Looking for that blessed hope. Holy living. Keeping our eye on him who's coming soon. And then witnessing, witnessing. People are hurting, my friend. This is it. There, I, I believe there's never been a time like this time to tell people about Jesus. Tell them about his coming. Tell them about the uh, things that are coming to this planet. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, just thank you again, oh God. You're so good to us, Father. Thank you, Father, your, for your word that we have it. We have it in our hands. And uh, we, we study it to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Oh God, thank you for God's word. Thank you for the word, the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, God, what a gift you've given us, salvation. But him, Father, our personal Savior, our Redeemer, our friend. Father, help us today as we, we go about our, our daily tasks. Oh, Father, help us to focus, uh, Father, and to uh, clear out things that so easily um, beset us. So, Father, thank you for this time. I thank you for these precious folks. I ask you to bless them. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.